We're doing a demonstration of the reference curves option available in audio tools and other apps by Studio 6 Digital. Reference curves are simply text files that you build in an external editor that contain entries for frequency and dB or impedance. Reference curves can be used as a guideline for setting up a system or in a professional test environment. To get to the reference curve screen, go to the setup page, hit the reference curve button and bring up the screen. And the first step is to transfer your reference curve files, which are simply text files with frequencies and dB levels uh, that you've created on your computer and get those into the iOS device. So to do that, bring up the reference files screen, go to the files window, and then enter the URL you see in your browser and follow the instructions there to transfer the file to the device. Reference files can have different numbers of data points in them. For example, in the test curve file, when I apply that, there are 300 entries at different frequencies. If I select one of my example curve files, I have 31 entries corresponding to one third octave data. The reference curve module has four different modes that you can use to look at reference curves. Test, limits, difference, and inverse. Let's look at test mode first. In test mode, you select the file and then hit display curve and bring it up and there's our curve on the screen. Now in this case, the reference curve is based around zero, but our actual FFT data is above that. So to handle that, we go back to our reference curve module and turn on center curves. When we've done that, the curve will stay centered in the screen and we can match the live curve, which is in white, over that. So that's the simplest way to use a reference curve. Now, let's say that we want to actually test our reference curve in a range. We can say, make it plus and minus five dB, go back to our graph, and now we can see that we're trying to fit our curve within that range. Uh, obviously, that's not quite enough range for what I'm doing right now. So let's increase that, and let's also turn on the pass-fail option. When this is turned on, you'll see there's a red or green dot on the screen. If the curve being displayed fits within the criteria, then the dot will turn green. If any part of the curve is outside of the window, it will turn red. In your application, you may actually have a case where you need two reference curves, one for the upper limit and one for the lower limit. In this case, switch to limits mode, select a different curve for, let's say, the low one, and let's go back and see what that looks like. So that's what we've got going on here. Here's our two curves, different for upper and lower range, and we also have the pass-fail still running. Another mode that we have available in the reference curve module is difference mode. In this mode, you just select one curve, and what we compute is the difference between the live trace and the reference curve. For example, in this case, you'd need to lower the high frequency to match the reference curve. And then the fourth mode that we have is inverse mode. In this mode, we compute the inverse or the difference between the reference curve and the live trace and this is suitable, for example, for creating an EQ curve. So if you're in difference mode or invert mode, the value of that curve is also saved in the XLS file when you store the main curve. A few other things to mention, the settings are saved uniquely for every module in audio tools. So the FFT and RTA can show different reference curves. Also, the function is available in RTA, FFT, Amplitude Sweep, and Impedance Sweep if you purchase it in any module. And that concludes our demonstration of the Reference Curve option from Studio 6 Digital.